You'll notice on the metering here, we actually have our tube emulation. We have a multi-band compressor here. We also have a the second um, device is being used as a compressor. And then here's my direct out of that channel strip. Of course, now that we zoom in, that track, the audio sounds. Of course. <laughs> Darn bass players. We're going to get a new bass player. All right. Um, you do have earlier, we talked about briefly how I can actually intermingle inputs and outputs. So let's just go ahead and quickly assign some things. So I hit assign, and let's just put some vocals here. So I hit channel list, I open up my channels, and we'll say those channels. Now if I label them as you know, vocals, it would say vocal, right. vocal names, okay? Um, all right. Now, the next thing I want to do is let's go add a couple more channels. I would like to go ahead and actually get an AUG send for the reverb send of that effect, okay? Then I'd also like to bring a, the return of that channel. And then let's go ahead and here, let's go ahead and assign a, a control group. And then here, let's go ahead and do maybe the master left and right. And over here, let's go ahead and do a matrix front fill, okay? So this gave me the ability to intermingle have my AUG sends of my inputs, my effects send, my effect return, a drummer VCA or whatever you wanted, the main PA, and a matrix output or whatever you need. It can be intermingled at any bank. Very flexible, very slick. Very nice. Our automation system is a very complete, even if you don't have the theatrical software, our automation is phenomenal. It's what people would aspire to have for their automation for theater. And this is the non-theater version. So what's slick is, I can go in here, let's just go ahead and add a couple scenes here. I'm going to turn on touch to fire and auto update. So now I can come in here, make a change, go to the next scene. If I come back to that scene, that change will actually be in there. I don't have to update it. So I can actually manually hit update any changes I make. Right. But if I turn on the auto update, it just does I don't it. have to do it. But what's also slick about our auto update feature is it's scopable. So if I wanted to, in my auto update, I could actually take out all everything except maybe we'll say faders and mutes. Oh, so it's not going to grab everything. So now I could run through my whole show or maybe my Easter service, actually go through and do all my fader moves and all my mutes. I don't have to hit update because those are stored. But if I made an EQ change, well, I'm just going through the third run through that day. Right. The girl's not singing as much, so I might EQ just for my own fun. But the next day, because I've turned off the EQ, that doesn't get recorded. Now, if I did want to save that EQ, I just hit update the current, and that EQ change would have been written in. That's very nice. Very flexible. As well as I have the ability to do um, crossfades of everything. So if I hit scope, I can actually come in here and do crossfades, and let's say I want all my faders to have a three-second crossfade time. Okay. Let me make a change here. Uh, let me fire that scene. Oh, I gotta fire that. Okay. So now, pull that down. And I didn't put the crossfade in it. So just, there we go. So I can actually put a crossfade time all the way across the desk, or in addition, in my crossfade, I can actually open up the channels and go to specific channels and have different crossfades. I can also do crossfade times on like my AUG sends or my EQ. Why would I do it on Augsum? Well, if you got a band who doesn't like changes, you could put a, a, a eight second crossfade time or three seconds. Every time you hit the scene, it's just a nice smooth transition right. every time you hit it. Okay. Wow. Very flexible. Um, uh, is the software out now? Well, when this starts shipping this week, this will be out for this okay. desk. For this desk, but for the other desk, the new <laughs> what software? What happens is the, the seven will come out first because that's kind of the flagship right. of everything. And then the, the five, then they'll just follow in okay. any order, any English order, so I'm not certain which one will be which. <laughs> but okay. I will, once you get the first one done, it's pretty easy on the others, because you've done all the, the worst right. case testing of trying to break it. Yeah. Um, so what, what's really nice about this is that we've hit a specific price point that, as well as we also have a, a trade-up program. So if you had a Digico desk, and you bought this, this is $158,500.
If you bought this and you had a D5, we would give you a $25,000 credit when you trade D5. in your D5. If you had somebody else's desk, we have various dollar amounts for everything, even analog consoles. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know about that. Yeah. Is that new? Yeah.